Yo, what's cracking mates? Today's topic is going to be pretty technical again, but don't despair, I try to keep it as concise and simple as I can. A week or two ago, I wanted to know which SIVA values are available in the out of the box 335A client. Unfortunately, I didn't find any resource on that which was complete enough for my liking, so I simply decided to take matters into my own hands. Since I already knew that there is a function to register CVARs in the client from a previous reversing project, I simply had to find a way to log those function calls in detail. Luckily, I got tipped off by even smarter people that there exists something called function hooking, which sometimes is also referred to as detouring. For this project, I was using the Detours library from Microsoft, which is available in Visual Studio as a NuGet package, so I don't have to cry myself to sleep while trying to get someone else's C++ repository to compile under Windows. So, what's function hooking anyway? Let me explain using this diagram I shamelessly stole from the Detours documentation. The upper part depicts the original unmodified function call. Source is calling target in step 1, which then simply returns back to source once it's done in step number 2. The lower part, on the other hand, shows the function call chain once it's hooked. In step 1 we call detour instead of target, and then we have two options. Either we call step 2, 3 and 4, which will call target and then return the source in step 5, or we skip target and only execute step number 5. What trampoline is and what it is needed for will be explained on the next diagram. Then we jump straight to code in Visual Studio. On the right side you can see what happens when a function is hooked. In essence, the first 5 bytes of target's instruction data in memory are overwritten with a jump instruction, which continues execution in detour. In order to call the original target code, a trampoline has been allocated, which has a copy of the instructions, which are now overwritten with the jump to detour. At the end, trampoline jumps to continue execution in the original function right after the jump to detour. Okay, enough theory for today. Let's get to the stuff you're actually here for. In order to not bore you to death, I will copy paste code from my already finished project so the video isn't dragging on for too long. Any important caveats will still be shown and mentioned, so in theory you should be able to follow along and replicate without any issues. The first step is to create an empty solution and afterwards add an empty C++ project which will contain part number one, the launcher. Just name the project launcher and when you're done, add a C++ file with the same name to the source files. As you can see in a moment, we are missing dependencies, which we fortunately can just install using NuGet. Right click either project or solution and then browse the repository for detours. We are interested in the one by Microsoft. Check the launcher project and click install. Also blindly accept the following confirmation dialog and simply accept selling your soul. With that being done, the launcher project is pretty much complete and as you can see it is rather short and fits on the screen without scrolling. Now it's time to add the second project which contains the hook function DLL. Right click the solution and add a new project. This time around choose the DLL template instead. Just name the project hook and call it a day. Since packages have to be installed for each project separately, we have to add detours for this new project as well. Simply execute the same steps as you have for the launcher project. Because the version of WoW we are dealing with is 32-bit, we should change the target architecture from x64 to x86. In theory, it should be possible to hook a 32-bit process from a 64-bit one with MS Tours, but it is just very unnecessary in our use case. My OCD made me rename the source file to hookcpp and then it's time to run the application. As you can see, it doesn't work, because it is complaining about hook DLL not being present. The issue here is that in the current solution configuration, the launcher project is built when you click run, but the hook project isn't touched at all. The solution for the solution is to right click the solution and then set that the launcher project depends on the hook project, and this way the DLL will always be built just before the launcher. Good, 
We solved one problem, but unfortunately we got another one now. Turns out we can solve this one rather easily as well. All we have to do is right click the hook project and then add a module definition file. This seems to be necessary in order for MSD tours to work. We export the DLL main function as number one and that's it. Here is the client folder before we launch the client with the hook DLL and as you can see no CSV file yet. Time for the moment of truth. Run the solution and make sure that you not only log in but also load into the world so all available CVARs should have been registered. Now close the client and look into the folder again. If everything worked out there should be a new file. In order to get a proper spreadsheet I open the CSV file in LibreOffice and make sure that the string delimiter is set to double quotes and all coded fields are treated as text. For convenience sake I'd suggest to freeze the first row and then start editing and formatting. I won't show it all on video since it's pretty boring. Afterwards just export as whatever spreadsheet format you prefer and you're done. By the way, I finally took the time and registered a new domain for this channel and also set up a new self-hosted git service like I said ages ago. This gives me more freedom and also avoids shenanigans caused by Microsoft. At the moment registration is closed until I have set up an email service as well. If there is something you wanna tell me, you have to do it here on YouTube or on Discord for the time being. And last but not least, here is a quick explanation of my code. The val directory is just a folder where val.exe lies. You obviously have to change it to yours. Right below the folder with the launcher is computed and this way I can also infer the absolute path of the DLL. As long as the launcher and DLL always remain in the same folder, it doesn't matter if the solution has been started as debug or release or if the binaries are moved to an entirely new location. Below are the definitions of the structs for startup info and process info, as well as the call to start a new process with a DLL. If you have ever started a new process from within C++, this will look very familiar. It's pretty much the same as the create process win API function, with just some slight modifications. This function is not the only way to do things. There's also one which accepts multiple DLLs, for example. I've also read that you can modify a binary so the DLL is written into its dependency table so you can skip the launcher part later on. At the end, the new process is resumed. That's it for the launcher. The hook code is a tiny bit longer but not that complex either. First we check if the DLL main function is run by a helper process. Just return if it's true. Right after, we determine the reason for the DLL call and in our case, we want to execute when the process attach happens. We open the CSV file in write mode, which clears everything already present and then write the CSV headers into it. Now the detour happens. This takes both the original and the hooking function as arguments and I'll come back to that in a second. Switch case number two just handles the process detach order to close the CSV file properly. Ok, back to the detour itself. Above the DLL main function you see a void pointer which represents the original function offset as well as a full definition of the hook function. In order for a successful function detour, both the original and the hook have to have the absolute same function signature. This means return type, column convention as well as parameters have to be the same. From my own experience so far I can say that the exact type for return value or parameters doesn't matter as long as the types have the same width. In the end it's all bits and bytes anyway. In the hook the first computation is the calling address which is computed using the return address via intrinsics and then subtracting 5 bytes for the call instruction. Now a CSV row containing all parameters is written. Note that there is a handle string call for each one which represents a string since we have to escape double quotes in the CSV file. We increment the CVAR index used for info and then comes probably the most elegant part of the project I came up with. I didn't want to define the function signatures multiple times for both the original and the hook since I wasn't 100% sure about the types and the calling convention. 
In a random moment of clarity, I found out that I can define the original function simply as void pointer and then cast it to the same signature as the hook function by using the decal type keyword to infer its typing. Making changes to the function signature in the development stage was made a lot easier this way, since I only had to adjust it in one place. That's it for today's programming lesson. I hope it was interesting, or at least helpful. Good luck with the own reversing and hacking projects. See ya!